So the final set of details in this set of notes is a little bit of theory to have some words to describe the way we get information in assembly language. And we call this addressing modes. Uh, and you've already seen many addressing modes, and MIPS has about six of them. Other assembly languages have more complicated as addressing modes that we can talk about later on. Uh, but I wanted to give you that language so that you can understand the way people talk about this when they say uh, where information is coming from in a particular instruction in uh, an assembly language. How do you get data? How many layers of translation do you need to get from the thing that's specified in the instruction to the data that you're interested presented to the ALU? Uh, and this is how we have. So in fact, we have six different ways. Uh, and again, these all are familiar to you. We just haven't had the language for them specifically. So first way is called implied. This means that we don't actually specify um, which register or the, where the data is. It's implied in the instruction itself. And we've already used that. Um, I used JAL here, uh, but we haven't really talked about JAL in enough detail to talk about why that's implied yet. So the better example is actually syscall. The instruction syscall doesn't have any operands. We just syscall. But we know that the operating system is going to check v0 and a0 um, when it when it ex executes the system call, right? Uh, because when we do syscall, there's all these different options for what the what the operating system can do. Uh, but to know what to do, it has to be able to check v0 to say what is being requested, right? v0 contains some number that indicates the request. But we don't say syscall v0, we just say syscall, and the v0 is implied. Jump and link um, is another example, which we'll talk about in some detail later on, but essentially it says when I'm jumping to a new location, before I go, I want to store the current value of the program counter in the re register called return address so that I can use it to get back when I'm done. Uh, again, we'll talk about it in more detail later on, but we don't say jump and link RA, we just say jump and link, and we know that in the process of executing jump and link, the return address will be an operand that will be stored in a special place, uh, the return address register. So the return address register itself, RA, is implied in the execution of that instruction. So an implied, an implied operand or an implied addressing mode means we don't have to say it, just by the nature of the instruction itself, we know that that value will be accessed. Immediate is the second of our six addressing modes, and this tells us that the value that we want to have access to is available immediately in the instruction itself. So this is whenever we do an immediate instruction, one of the operands is available immediately in the instruction itself, and this is called immediate addressing. And the definition of immediate addressing is that the value of the operand is in the instruction itself. The, ins the value goes straight from the instruction to the ALU. It bypasses the register file. The third addressing mode is called register. Register addressing means that the value we're interested in is in the register file, and the specification for where in the register file to find it is shows up in the instruction. And so we actually have a level of translation here. The instruction has to be used to access information in the register file. The register file has to be used to access information in the, in the data memory, uh, sorry, in the, in the ALU itself. So the instruction gets used to look up information in the register file, which then is the data that we're interested in. So one level of translation, register operations. And in fact, uh, instructions can have more than one addressing mode. Right? A regular I format instruction has both immediate addressing and register addressing. So both of those are available. Those three are very standard um, a, a assembly language addressing modes. And most other assembly languages also have these three. The next few are a little bit special for uh, MIPS, but they are based on generic assembly modes that all instruction that, that all assembly languages have. So base addressing <clears throat> is the kind of addressing we use for our load and our store instructions. And that means that the operand value is in memory, and we have to look up the address in register. And we also have to add an immediate value to that register. So it's actually a four-part access, right? The operand value is stored in memory. The address is stored in a register. So first of all, the instruction is used to look up a register which contains an address, not the data, but the address of the data. 
then that register needs to be added to the immediate value that's in the instruction itself. And then finally, that new effective address can be used to access the data memory. So it's a four-part process to get to data that's in memory. This is called base or base plus offset addressing. The fifth kind is called PC relative. This is program counter relative, or this is the kind of addressing that we use for branch instructions. Program counter relative means that the information we're interested in is relative to the program counter rather than being relative to some address in some register somewhere. It's similar to base plus offset addressing, except that instead of adding the offset to some register in the instruction in the register file, we add that offset to the program counter. So to get the new program counter, we take the current program counter and add the offset that's in the instruction. Finally, we have the sixth addressing mode, which is called pseudo-direct. Pseudo-direct addressing uh, is, <laughs> it, it's a little weird. It's, it's a pretend kind of direct addressing. In other assembly languages, direct addressing is a kind of immediate addressing where the address of the data that's in memory is available in the instruction itself. Right? The instruction contains an address. The address is used to look up information in memory. That information is used into a register wherever it needs to be used. Pseudo-direct means it's almost direct addressing. We have this weird sort of um, mapping that we have to use because we have a 32-bit address and a 32-bit instruction, and so we can't fit a 32-bit address into a 32-bit instruction. Six bits has to be reserved for the opcode. Every instruction has that. And so we only have 26 bits left. And so we have to construct a direct address out of those 26 bits. And we do that by adding 00, 0 to the back end because we know that all instruction addresses are word aligned. And then we got to get the top four bits from somewhere. And so we take them from the current value of the program counter. So pseudo direct is MIPS's best effort for direct addressing, knowing that instructions have to be exactly 32 bits. And this is another component of reduced instruction set architectures to simplify the way that the architecture is constructed. We don't want multiple different sizes of instructions. Every instruction is 32 bits. That allows us to optimize for the hardware that can implement them. So those are the six addressing modes that are available in MIPS. And there's a bunch of others for a bunch of other instructions and a bunch of other assembly languages, but we will look at those later on when we look at a few sort of expansions from the ideas that we learn in MIPS into the ideas that are available in other assembly languages.